Uh, Nathan and Rex have a thing they wanted to show us, uh, which is exciting. And this uh, this does relate to technology because uh, we we sort of found out about this uh, through an email <laughs> <laughs> from Rich Neiman, who I'm sure most of you know. This is what happens when you retire. I think you sit around and surf the net and find cool stuff and send it to your friends. Surf YouTube. Yes, and uh, so. Um, and Rex and I both happen to be doing some things with pressure at the time, so uh, we just uh, looked at the pictures on the internet, and uh, which is, I guess, uh, somebody, a professor from BYU and another from Purdue, those two guys. Um, the, the, the video that both of us saw were from a professor at BYU who did this with his classes, but then there's some stuff at BYU where they really go into a pretty detailed analysis of the, of the device and how it works. I'm going to talk over this. Okay. Okay, so just briefly, in terms of the construction, it's just real uh, cheap. It's an inch and a half PVC pipe uh, with two connectors at either end, and then taking a little piece of... Uh, Stop for just a second. At any time, this thing could... Blow. Yeah, don't stand down there anymore. And and this could be really loud when it goes, so just don't... There, there won't be any shots fired, but... <laughs> Good call. Yeah, I, I actually did have one go off prematurely once in class, but everybody was, you know... It was, some fault with the mylar, but so you take a little balloon mylar, um, just real thin stuff, and then you take your connectors, put it over the end, make a snug seal on either side. The mylar is strong enough so when uh, the tube is evacuated, it doesn't uh, doesn't burst. Although if you do poke a hole in it, then it just immediately uh, shreds and uh, and lets the air in. So um, we put a um, a ping pong ball down at this end, and uh, so when the when the when the Air rushes in, basically just shoves the ping pong ball down to the to the other end. And um, Rex and I uh, played with this with some students uh, after school one day. And um, did you want to show your video? Shoot it, once. shoot it once and then show. Okay. So uh, the key is uh, have an excellent um, vacuum. Let most of the molecules diffuse out of there, and um, there's not really much holding it back, and it accelerates. We did you? What much that what you do with your kids? Well. We are doing castle electricity with my freshman right now, and uh, in castle you develop an analogy to electric <coughs> potential using pressure model, and so we decided that these kids who had never, really never had any formal experience with <coughs> air pressure, um, we should teach them a little bit about air pressure and what better way than to see how great the pressure is that one atmosphere provides. And so I basically gave my students the parameters of this thing, the diameter of the golf ball, the length of the tube, told them what one atmosphere was in pounds per square inch. So there's a little unit conversion exercise in here as well. And then their job was, given those parameters, what else did I tell them? The mass of the ping pong ball they had to calculate the theoretical muzzle velocity of this thing with the assumption that the ping pong ball was flat and that the pressure in here was in fact zero and the pressure over there was 14.7 pounds per square inch. But pretty close to no air resistance, which is what you make the assumption all the time, but hey, actually probably pretty close. So that, that calculation actually gives you about 450 meters per second. So one and a third times the speed of sound, something like that. We took a video of it, which actually is on here. Well, um, really it, got a value. Yeah, we, uh, I've been thinking about it. All this back. For chemistry, it's just, you know, the kinetic molecular theory, trying to get kids to figure out that, yeah, there's a lot of move, mo movement here and with the molecules, which uh, they don't get because you don't uh, usually <coughs> sense it, obviously. Um, so I didn't have, my students really do anything with it. I just set it up and was like, yeah, and just to get them to think about the reason that the ball shoots down here is because the molecules just shove it down to the end. Um, you want to do it? You can do it. You want to uh, cover your ears when he gets ready to do this because, as I said, it is pretty loud. <coughs> okay, three, two, one. Sweet. Oh, wow. And it 
Yeah, yeah. this one. That's a ping pong ball or no, a ping pong ball? No, it's a ping pong ball. Where's the ping pong ball? Um, the ping pong ball came back to me. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah the ping pong ball ricocheted back and, you know, you, you, get, you get one shot at the ping pong ball. <coughs> no, 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 yes, it does. It holds. Sometimes they just shatter into a whole lot of pieces. Would you do an initiated again? I just poked it with a pair of scissors to, uh, um, how long does the pump take, take to evacuate that? Uh, we It'll let it go, go a couple of minutes. Well a couple of minutes, couple of five minutes. minutes, we think maybe works better. We haven't right. checked it out in enough detail to know for sure. I have one of those high-speed Casio cameras, so we, uh, we did the high-speed video of this. So there's the muzzle of it, and that's a meter stick. Those are 10 meter increments. And there's a kid who's doing a countdown up here. That's five. This is like at one seven speed. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let it go from there. One. <laughs> okay, so we go back to the frames. Rex, do you have any special lights on that? No, it's just the room lights. Fluorescent. You see the pieces of mylar flying. Yeah, just a normal. So there's actually the way this works is the shutter's open the whole time. So that the length of that streak you see is how far the ball went in one frame. So one frame is a, a 210th of a second. So you can see that it just, and that turns out to be about 110 meters per second. About a third of the speed of sound is what we're actually getting as opposed to one and a third times the speed of sound. But it's pretty impressive, a lot of fun. And um, some modifications that were done uh, with some of the college folks is they, um, is they go ahead and evacuate this, they put this on here, and then they also attach um, a, a larger uh, contraption here, just PVC, that's hooked up to another pump that pressurizes. So you evacuate the tube first, then you just start pressurizing your larger container behind it, and, uh, and, then, and then it just, instead of poking it, it just the pressure gets big enough that it then ruptures and fires the ball through at a considerably higher uh, velocity. They, I think the guy estimated 1.2 1, 1, 1. or something yeah, like that. Higher than the speed of sound, actually. And then he put a ping pong paddle in front of it <laughs> and blew a hole through the ping pong paddle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did the guy just stand in front of it, too? The guy at BYU stood in front of it with an apron that had a target on there, and that left a huge well. And I would never even think about doing that. <laughs> Blasting holes through soda cans. Yeah. Uh, question. Any practical application for these? Well, if you evacuate, you can move with it. I mean, you, know, you, you, you just evacuate the whole thing, and then you got a little hold to launch ping pong yeah, ball out of fire. Out of it. No. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun way to introduce okay. pressure. And that's, that's it's really a variation on the crush the can experiment. Yeah. yeah. There's um. Back in 2001, there was a, a book uh, that was actually recommended by, by, in my house book called, called Vacuum Bazookas, Electric Rainbow Jelly, and 27 Other Projects. It was written by a guy named Neil Downey. Uh, I think it's still in print. I think you can still get a copy. Probably not 50 copies, but probably it's worth two. And uh, it, it really is it's a, a sequel. He had, he had a, a previous book. So if you look at if you look up under Neil Downey in D-O-W-N-I-E in uh, Amazon, you can find the other book, which I think is even better. There's also a version of this idea that was written up in Journal of Chemical Education where you pressurize the tube at the bottom and use that to, to blast uh, 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 wine cork. That also works really well. It's not as good as this for physics because it's not evacuated, but it gives the idea of the pressure to do for you. Next on our agenda. Well, wait, before you get, just in case, because somebody asked about this, the way we put that mylar on there, this is just a regular PVC coupler. So we just cut a square, pulled it tight, and then sealed it on there. Some of them show using different kinds of packing tape and stuff like this, but this is kind of clean and pretty easy to. And it's really quick, actually. And, and the, all the PVC and the valve, all that kind of stuff, was probably about twenty bucks. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you got a one and a 
Quarter inch. One and, one and a half. half, inch. half inch. Yeah, one oh, and a half this, this. So what you do is you get just one piece, you need a T, and then uh, this is actually two pieces. This one uh, just fits over, so you take a little piece off the end um, that you can put in here to glue this, these two pieces together. Then you have this. This is uh, threaded at the top, so you get this whole thing with the uh, square nut or whatever on the top that just screws down into that. And uh, so what we did is uh, just drill a hole through the, the top of that. It was just a little bit uh, smaller than the threads on the brass um, nipple, whatever you call this. And then so basically just kind of forced it in there. But what I did is I put I put a uh, a wrench and a clamp uh, so the wrench was sticking out. Then I put the wrench on here, and then I was able to just, you know, torque that thing in there. And it kind of self threads through there. <clears throat> and then we um, we just put some uh, sil what is it, silicone tube or something like that. Well, we had a little leak, uh, and I added some goop to it. And some goop. The leak, okay. So. And then you just put a little uh, piece on the end. I don't know if, in terms of, uh, obviously, when the pressure is allowed in, you know, some rushes up in here too. So for this tube that we put in here, um, it's not exactly, uh, you know, a smooth fit. So I just dremeled out the end of it so that it was kind of tapered. So it kind of is a small funnel, but just with a sharp edge on there. You know, I don't know how fast it's going by the time it gets to here, but I was afraid that it might damage the the ball. So we just we dremeled that out. One more thing about the ping pong balls. In 2000, the for the Olympics, they changed the size of ping pong balls from what had always been 38 millimeter diameter to 40 millimeter diameter for <coughs> regulation ping pong balls. And so if you get a three star competition grade ping pong ball, that actually fits closer to the um, inside diameter of the one and a half inch PVC than the 30. We, we shot some 38 millimeter ones and, and did fine, but um, the guy on the internet recommends the 40 it's easier to calculate. It is a nice number. Mm -hmm. Just a ten foot piece of pipe. Yeah, we um, the and then we, we cut off. We ended up off. with a little bit. Yeah, we ended up with um, probably a meter that we just. The guy at Purdue that. says that uh, he's he's got a clear one and he's done some really heavy duty analysis of this. And he <coughs> says the point of diminishing is about two meters. So we decided for storage reasons to just chop it off at two meters. That stuff's really cheap too. Yeah, I mean. Uh, the, the, probably the brass thing costs as much as the... <laughs>